to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, January 28th, 2014. I'm Leanne McAdoo, and here's a look at what's coming up tonight. Tonight, Obama warms up to using executive orders. The police state gets ready for Super Bowl 48. And we sit down to talk to anti-TSA activist John Corbett about his new TSA pre-check status. All this and more on the InfoWars Nightly News. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Vice President, members of Congress, fellow Americans. 51 years ago, John F. Kennedy declared to this chamber that the Constitution makes us not rivals for power, but partners for progress. Oh, man. That was Obama just one year ago. Quoting JFK, mind you, those definitely were not his words because the tone of his administration has changed entirely in just 365 days. Tonight, we can't await the State of the Regime address when Obama announces his assertion of his unilateral agenda and lets the country know that it's moving into a dictatorship. That's right. The man that once criticized George W. Bush for abusing his executive authority will now go ahead. He's admitted that he's warmed up to the idea. That's according to his White House advisor, John Podesta, who says that when Obama believes he has the authority to make progress without action by Congress, he will do it. Now, he says there's a lot of authority that's vested to Obama under the laws of the United States. And he thinks that Obama's really looking forward to a year of action and to tonight when he gives his State of the Union speech. It'll be a breakthrough year where he can lay out some of these practical, concrete ideas that will get people on board a stable economic footing and see their wages going up for the first time in a long time. And while they're leaving us powerless to fight against any of these pandemics that might be popping up, they're also leaving us powerless to take any money out of the bank. We've been previously reporting that they've been doing a lot of capital controls. Just Saturday, it emerged that HSBC was restricting large cash withdrawals from the UK up to 5,000 pounds. Now, the Russians, my bank, which Bloomberg reports that my bank is one of Russia's top 200 lenders by assets, has introduced a complete ban on cash withdrawals until next week week. So of course, here we go, just another form of capital capital controls. So we've got Obama announcing his dictatorship tonight. The bubonic plague is set to be released and FEMA's preparing for motor coach evacuation. There are capital controls. You can't take your money out of the bank. But while all this is going on, all anyone can talk about is the Illuma Grammys. And now this week, it's the Super Bowl. And I guarantee no one is going to be there worrying about this mass distraction and how the world stage has been set for all eyes to be on how the U.S. is fighting against terrorism. Just take a look at what's going to be happening there at Super Bowl Central. They've already declared it a level one national security event, which basically that means homeland securities Presidential Directive 5 kicks in, which means the feds will take the lead in any security operations in New Jersey and New York. Incredible. And then the priority order for any possible threats would include a suicide bombing, vehicles laden with explosives, or of course, you know, another mass shooting. In addition to these traditional terrorists, officials are anticipating the possibility of hacktivists with political and social messages to take advantage of social media to spread disinformation and sow confusion. Much like the Syrian Electronic Army hacked into CNN's Twitter and sowed mass confusion about the al qaeda backing the rebels in Syria. But they also go on to say that they're going to be x-raying every single thing that comes in and out of the stadium, the food, the seat cushions, every beverage, every piece of merchandise, and of course, they're going to violate the Fourth Amendment by doing searches on the trains to and from the stadium on random passersby, anyone that's going to and from. They'll have canines everywhere. And that's in addition to 
the air exercises and the the Navy patrolling the waters there. I mean, it is going to be a mad house. But go ahead, keep your eyes on the game. That's all that matters. While the real game is being played out here by the globalist, they are using this as a mass distraction to go ahead and assert their total authoritarianism while we just sit back and take it. And just to prove how contrived this TSA is just security theater, it's not there to protect us from terrorism. We're going to have an interview coming up with John Corbett. He's the activist of the TSA Out of My Pants website. He was the first civilian to sue the agency. And based, based on court documents, he was able to expose how the agency's own documents show that there was no real terrorist threat, nothing even in the past 30 years. Now he has just been given a lifetime get out of jail free pass by the TSA. They've given him a lifetime skip right through the gropy hands of the lines of the TSA because he actually asserted his rights as a free citizen. And they were like, you know what, you're making a little too much noise. Go ahead. We're going to just give you a free pass. You don't have to deal with the TSA. So that's really what this thing is all about. It's just to assert total control. Are you going to sit down and take it? My friends, Alex Jones here to tell you about some of the most important information concerning you and your family's health. Radiation levels have more than doubled in the last 60 years in the Northern Hemisphere from all of the nuclear testing and radiological accidents. Radioactive contamination is now in most of the food supply. There's only two ways to avoid this. Move south of the equator or properly protect your thyroid with nascent iodine. Looking to protect my family, I've done deep research. Nascent iodine is the purest, cleanest, absolute best form of of iodine to protect yourself and your family. It's made right here in the USA, completely non-GMO. I searched out the best quality and now have developed a double strength form of nascent iodine, exclusively available at InfoWarsLife.com. Nascent iodine is on record as one of the only safe ways to detox from fluoride poisoning. Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Secure your super high quality nascent iodine today at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com. We're on the march, the Empire's on the run, and the InfoWars Army is standing strong. Wake up your family, friends, and neighbors and break the matrix at InfoWarsStore.com. Learn the truth and spread the message of liberty with the world's most comprehensive collection of books and documentary films. Maintain a healthy metabolism and energize your body to perform at peak health with Survival Shield Nascent Iodine. Protect your family and be prepared with survival foods and emergency preparedness kits. And now you can drink safe water with your own ProPure water filtration system, which removes fluoride and other harmful chemicals from your family's water supply. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. So join the revolution, InfoWarsStore.com. So as New York is setting up a major surveillance grid to spy on everyone through their cameras, the State Department of Education is now setting up a program that will spy on your children from preschool until the age of 20. Now, this was developed by the New York State Education Department. It was funded by the federal government, and it's promoted by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Hmm. It's the P20 Data Collection Program. It allows government entities to share and access records for every student in the state. The overall goal is going to be monitoring individuals from childhood to death. Now, it's going to allow New York State Education Department and other agencies to link data without the need for agencies to unnecessarily add new regulations or seek legal policies to collect data. Aw, so they don't want to have any, have to create any unnecessary new laws or go through that pesky constitutional legal system to spy on you. Now, the program was named P20 to indicate the tracking of students from pre-kindergarten to around age 20 when they enter the workforce. 
Now, the idea for such a database existed as far back as 2002, when the New York Times reported that the Pentagon wanted to analyze Americans' educational, criminal, financial, medical, and travel records in order to profile every citizen in the country. And then, of course, this came to fruition in the past year via Obamacare when the federal data services hub was rolled out. And that is a comprehensive database which provides federal entities real-time electronic access to the dossiers of any American that's compiled with information from the IRS, the Department of Homeland Security, the Justice Department, and others. So there you have it. And you thought you were just getting some free health care. But now that they've got all these cameras set up around New York, it's not just the trendies on the East Coast. The trendies on the West Coast have got their cameras. And for the greater good, the authorities now want them to allow them access 24-7 to their home surveillance cameras. But Leanne, who watches the watchers? <laughs> You're in here doing a great job. We're about to have our live coverage of the State of the Union. But they actually say it's for the greater good there. For the greater uh, good. And, and <laughs> who watches the watchers historically? And again, it's always been illegal to keep data on kids especially. Now they're saying, no, no, we're going to keep all that data on you. I mean, this is a total authoritarian takeover. I'm sorry. The news is going to be over soon. Live coverage. I'm just too fired up. I'm, I'm just too fired up. <laughs> we'll see if Obama announces his Orwellian takeover for the greater good in just a few minutes when we do our live coverage of the State of the Regime address. But back to this news. Californians are being asked to allow the authorities 24-7 access to their security cameras. They said, when you're, you know, it's just for the greater good and it's a logical next step. You tend to behave when the cameras are on you. And this is so police can monitor whatever the cameras are trained on. And they say, you just got to trust us so that we're not going to be watching your home 24-7. It's just, it's for the greater good so that you'll behave. But what about them? We've already seen how the police act, even sometimes when they know they're being filmed on camera, sometimes when they don't know that they've been filmed. But it hasn't stopped them. It hasn't kept them, you know, behaving better for the greater good. In fact, they've gotten away with murder on camera. It hasn't done anything. And, and, and then we have juries who allow them to get away with murder because they were just doing their job. With all the police state measures going on in the name of keeping you safe, I think it's time that somebody got around to watching The Watchmen. We'll begin tonight in New York, where a man in his 80s was beaten by the NYPD, the infraction, jaywalking. The man seemingly didn't understand the officer's command to cease movement. After the gentleman and the officer came in contact, a shoving match allegedly took place. Other officers joined in and the man was beaten bloody by the NYPD. The man is now seeking damages of $5 million. A young California man has had his genitals tased until he could smell his flesh burning. This was stemming from an incident where his father dropped a cigarette. After an argument with police over whether or not his father should pay a fine, the young man was tased repeatedly in his groin. We'll bring the news now to Texas, Andrew to be specific, where a man open carrying his rifle on his back was arrested by police. The reports say that a school was nearby but didn't specify the man's distance from the school. Even the person who called in to complain about the man says that he was not carrying in a manner calculated to cause alarm. He was just calmly walking. You wouldn't think anything of it unless he didn't have a gun. The local open carry group has released audio of what they say is a meeting between themselves and Bud Jones, the police chief of Andrew, where he said that he would not arrest law-abiding open carriers. Disturbing the peace with disorderly conduct well, because yeah. of a person calling in a 911 okay. and them justifying yeah. that. Okay, and okay. Yeah, here, here, the, have that one. If, if we get a, a 911 person gun, that person not to say, I'm so and so, I live over there, so and so, they're not going to go to jail. Yeah. They're not going to be charged. It's when they have caused some alarm. We move the news now to LAX where it's come out that officers were taking unapproved breaks right before the shooting rampage. But don't worry, TSA plans to keep you safe by allowing known terrorists to bypass security measures completely. But let's end tonight 